What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Welcome back to another video from the studio. Uh, probably like a lot of you guys uh, around the country and other countries, I spent a lot of time indoors, spending extra time looking at my corals, my fish and my tanks. And um, it's kind of a good time to be a aquarium hobbyist because we have something to occupy ourselves with uh, indoors. But um, there's so many systems here in the Reef Builder studio that I acquire corals and I acquire fish and I acquire corals and then one day I wake up and I realize, oh man, there's a lot of clownfish in here. And so uh, for this video, what I'd like to do is uh, go around and show you my clownfish colony that's in here. And I guess uh, tell you some of my future plans for clownfish here at the studio. So let's dive right on in. This is what I call Coral Flat uh, 3. And this is kind of the lagoonal system here. And uh, there's a wide variety of corals, but this is the uh, slightly higher nutrient, higher light system. There's a little bit of everything, but one thing that I've kept in here the most is the anemones. So what ha happened was this is a normally <laughs> giant red eye anemone, of course, for the video, it's gonna be as small as it ever gets. But you can tell from the size of the basket that this thing just totally fills up this entire place. I had to turn the lights back on uh, to do this video. But so I had this Ritter eye anemone in a big basket right here and I tried to make a super colony of clownfish. So I put all the clownfish in there together at the same time, hoping that they would just kind of sort it out and uh, the black storm clownfish, <laughs> they sorted it out. So a uh, long story short, I have clownfish all over this tank, all over this tank. There's a little bit of them everywhere and they're all different clownfish varieties. So let's start with one of my three favorite uh, storm clownfish varieties. These are the black storm clownfish from Sea and Reef. They look so beautiful. I mean, they're little pugnacious little uh, bullies. That's why they won the battle for the uh, Ritter Eye Anemone. And they are absolutely gorgeous. Look at those guys. So we've got the black storms in here and it's gonna be hard to chase them. But one that I could always find is a very large spot synctus clownfish. This guy is actually hosting in an elegance coral and uh, she has beautiful long streamers on her tail. Um, unfortunately, I got her along with her partner at the same time and they ended up getting separated when I moved one anemone and now they're both large. So I'm not gonna be able to uh, uh, pair those back up together. So I have some new small spot synctus clownfish. And this, if you're not familiar with this, this is a uh, domesticated variety of bisynctus clownfish from the Red Sea. Um, they, unlike other clownfish, they, they have all of their bars, but they have some extra spotting. So this is kind of a unique strain among all of the different clownfish. All right, what else do we have? Um, here's a, basically a regular Picasso, just a nice looking little dude. And I've, I think I've had all of these clownfish for about, since the studio started, oh, well, a little over a year. And I think most of them are gonna be from Sea and Reef Aquaculture. And this one right here is hosting in a beautiful, beautiful glitter Ghani. Australians taught me about the, uh, the glitter or the sparkle gonies, and this one is is a really really nice specimen. It was it was just you know kind of kind of all right when I picked it up from uh, Ultra Corals Australia, but it has settled in really well, and um, you can see that this is kind of my uh, my goniopora 
alley right here. So a bunch of different gunnies. All right, who else do we have? All right, we've got some orange storm clownfish. Everything's kind of in, all the storms are actually in pairs. So here's one of the uh, uh, orange storm clownfish. He hasn't really paired up or repaired with the other orange storm, which I'll try to find again. But uh, one thing that's really cool about the, the storm clownfish as they get bigger is that beautiful uh, coloring on their pectoral fins. They just look so fun, just kind of clowning around. Look, look at that, look at that white right there and behind the pectoral fins. Just such a really, really fun example. Some other fish in this tank, if I can get them. Oh, they went and hit a little bit. Oh, there's the rabbit fish. This is a biota uh, blue-lined rabbit fish. Excellent, excellent algae eater. Uh, this guy has really helped to keep this tank clean, but this video is not about that. It's about clownfish. So let's find some more. Okay, so we have a little grouping over here because this is kind of where I usually feed. The only percula is an onyx percula here, um, not a wild type. Uh, but a domesticated strain. Just a very high black uh, version of a percula. And you know, while we're here, I always thought that the long fin clownfish would be total sissies in a communal environment, right? They're those long fins. In a freshwater tank, long fins are almost an invitation for other fish to pick on you, right? This guy is actually the biggest bully. Those fins somehow don't slow him down at all. I'm sure there would be some uh, disadvantages in the wild, but in this system, in this tank, he's actually the biggest problem child. He's actually acting really calm. It almost looks like he might have paired up with the, uh, um, the onyx percula over there. And uh, let's see, who else do we have around here? I know there was that other orange storm. Okay, so here's the other orange storm. And uh, you know, it's funny, there's a bunch of anemones in here, but these guys aren't super attached to them except for the Ritter eye anemone. I really like this guy because he's got a lot of white and um, just kind of a series of spots there on his side. Come on, get back in focus, get back in focus. Come on, buddy. There you go. So you can see those really just bold, dark spots uh, within his white pattern. Man, the storm clownfish, that is just one of the best varieties ever. Look at this guy. He doesn't have quite as much white on his pectoral fins as the other one, but that series of spots. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you can see an example of the long fin kind of throwing his weight around, which is kind of funny. And uh, there we go. So there's a big overview of the tank. I think a lot of the fish think it's feeding time. While I'm at it, let me go grab some food. So normally when I turn off the flow and give these uh, fish a really good look, that is when I'm most likely to feed, which is why we're seeing a lot of the clown clownfish kind of come out and investigate. Um, I don't feed anything special, but just for this video, I think it'll be simple to feed some floating pelleted food. So I'm just gonna drop it carefully on the surface here and let them all come and get it. And they will, they will. Come on, guys. There you go, come get the food. There you go. That spot synctus is not shy at all. Once the food is found though, they will all come around. So there you can see that, that biota blue line rabbit fish. Tominies are one of my super duper favorite surgeon fish in general. And uh, excellent uh, algae eaters. There's a better look at the uh, onyx percula. Here's that, uh, where does he go? There's that Picasso. Yeah, so it's funny, like these guys host in just whatever they want, this was Spitularia, the anemones, the elegance coral, um, the gonies, and um, there's just enough room in here for them to kind of all spread out. I did not <laughs> intend to create a, uh, a clownfish colony like this, but it just, just kind of happened that way. And you know what? It's turned out really, really fun. The clownfish are really cool to look at from the side, but having a clownfish in a kind of a, a, a goldfish pool environment like this has actually been quite quite fun um and again if that long fin clownfish really really goes after somebody there's plenty of room for him for them to spread out so uh so yeah here's the funny part i actually i'm actually uh, a big fan of several wild type clownfish i'm a big fan of wild type clownfish 
but I don't think I have any wild clowns. So two clownfish that are definitely on my wish list species-wise are um, true percula clowns. Solomon Island, Papua New Guinea, true percula clownfish. It was kind of like the first cool rare fish that I got when I was younger. And another one is probably not going to come my way in a long time. It's a wild blue lit clownfish or the wide bar clownfish, Amphiprion latezonatus. Um, so let me show you some of the other clownfish. This is most of the clownfish here in the clownfish colony. But I do have one more over here in with the um, conspic. This guy, I don't know what's wrong with him. He's a little bit beat up. I don't know if it's from, if it's from hosting from like in really stinging euphelia corals, but he's just he's just not quite as pimping as the other one. And it could be a function of the uh, of the tank itself. But see, he's got no streamers. He's got some bumps and stuff on his skin and uh, a little bit of the raggedy fins. I, he's No one in here could actually pick on him, but I think he's darker and low raggedier from having to host in euphelias because that's all he has. All right, so another pair of clownfish that I have here are the mocha storms, which have already been fed twice this week. We've seen those guys before, looking really beautiful. Big thumbs up if you're ready for an update on this tank that's four months old, set up in one day, still haven't touched it or done a water change. And all the corals look more or less fine. It needs, you know, there's an algae scrub there on the top. And then I was, I was telling you earlier about a pair of new Spocksinctus clownfish that Sea and Reef sent me. And so here's those guys, because those other Spocksinctus are just way too big to pair together. So what I'm gonna try to do is probably pair up my largest Spocksinctus with one of these little guys, maybe put two little guys in with it and just see which one, uh, or maybe they'll make a little trio and uh, probably rehome the, the dark spot synctus and, and pair them up if one of these um, turns out estranged um, in the, uh, the marriage with the large female adult clownfish, the large female adult spot synctus. So most of the time when I'm making a video for you guys, for the channel, I'm trying to think of something really educational, partly entertaining, but I'm always trying to prove something maybe, uh, just show you some new gear or show you some crazy coral. And I just, I think there's room for in the, in the channel to just kind of just show you how much reef life is here at the studio nowadays. Cause uh, I spend a lot of time looking at the tanks as I'm sure many of you do right now. And uh, gonna try to keep it flowing. I know I always say that, but now we all have more time than ever. So thanks for joining me on this video. Um, before I go away, I want to give a special thank to Craft Aquatic. You collectively, we are all, we can all be pretty critical on YouTube and our comments and our expectations of lighting and video quality and audio quality. Uh, but um, I've been having a problem with a little bit of popping on the microphone and uh, Craft Aquatic actually gave me a really good uh, uh, constructive feedback that the popping that I was having was due to interference here in the studio because everything I had to use smart devices, not controllers, and uh, I was able to do some troubleshooting. So shout out to Craft Aquatic for helping me up my audio game here in the studio. Um, if you have any questions about clownfish, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. I hope everyone is uh, weathering the storm and enjoying their aquariums, and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Later, guys.